hi everybody welcome back you are watching philosophy with kerry key so this video will be based on the divine feminine here i would like to illuminate women and our situation and how it has changed for us in the past few thousands of years so to when we stopped being warriors and started being housewives Women have always been maternal, but we tended to stop accepting the divine feminine aspects of ourself and living to our fullest. We stopped appreciating how amazing we are. We are not only housewives, we are much more. Understanding our biological differences to men I want us to remember our worth and shatter the illusion of a weak woman. So let's summon goddess energy, take back our power and again be equal. So new evidence endlessly emerges to show that in ancient times people favoured the goddess and that in our ancient times we used to have many cultures who followed matriarchy and followed the goddesses. So they worshipped them. Women were often equal and sometimes, if not even more so, powerful. We matched men in a very unique way. And by that I mean that they were no more powerful, no more God-given rightly powerful than a woman. Before I get too much into this video, I do want to note that I am all for masculine energy as well and I think that males are equally as important in this universe. Together we are creation, apart we are destruction. So in our ancient times women were often no less capable, no less powerful. We matched men with our abilities. So this is my other cat. Pearl, say hello. I am Pearl. Women in history were seen as wise women. And in Sumerian texts, it showed that we were given the information from the serpent in the Garden of Eden. In most cultures that had female rule, there was not really any evidence of barbaric wars and such. The world lived in harmony, in tune with this world and the other worlds beyond the veil. They saw past the physical illusions. Over time, a separation occurred. There was a separation between men and women, in that women were deemed sorcerers and manipulators, and were often deemed witches and burned if they were too powerful. Acting lesser and avoiding attention became a safety net until we eventually forgot that we were ever anything more than just keepers. And then laws imposed and gave males an even higher status and more control, then creating a man's world. But we need balance, it can't just be one energy. And this shows because when the male energy took over, it would be an aggressive world filled with wars and conflict and violence. Men lost sight of their sympathetic nature and their caring and emotional state and deemed that as a feminine thing, which they should avoid. And it was seen as a bad thing. And then from this, they lost sight of seeing the good aspects of their feminine nature. Tests have been conducted and show that male and female energy patterns flow in different ways. Male energy is more of a burst, like something that would resemble the energy that flows inside a Tesla coil and the energetic lines that go around in that. It is more aggressive. Female energy flows in a pattern of a connection that flows peacefully and joined. This shows us that a female's energy is more co 
controlled and a male's energy is more aggressive. So yes, we are different, not in our strength, our capability, in our energy patterns and the way we are formed. No energy is superior to the other. They are both equally matched and they balance and complete each other. If we as a population of Earth came together and accepted each other's energies, they would balance each other. So for our female ancestors, thousands of years ago, it became quite a man's world and we lost our power. Female energy in a male or a female became something to keep secret. It unfortunately became a weakness in the eyes of the public. And so males now often grow up with the notion that it is weak to be like a girl. They are often trained from a young age to be a boss, a leader and to overpower people. So this is a mask that society gives them and girls are often given the mask of the good girl. By that I mean that we often grow up feeling like it is something to be ashamed of if we do something that acts in a way that is the opposite. So if a young boy cries when he falls over he feels like he is weak. The same way that a girl feels like she should be sensible and proper like a little princess. There are quite a lot of people out there who still have the notion that women should be seen, not heard. Stupid. And so now, every few years, hundreds of thousands of women are murdered. And this is often by someone who they have a romantic connection with. And why? The reason often is that the man felt he could control the woman. And that is because quite often in today's world, unfortunately, men still have the notion that they can overpower women. And maybe this is because we lost our strength. We stopped training our muscles to be strong and we stopped doing all these things that made us fierce women, fierce warrior women. Male suicide has also spiked since this shift because they feel they cannot be open. It is weak to suffer, as they believe. And so this is generally just a bunch of brainwashing. The world will always be in balance until we make it balanced by coming together and embracing both male and female aspects of ourselves and the world around us. Evidence shows that when given the chance, a female is no less capable than a man in any aspect. So men are not genetically stronger or more capable. Men and women are opposites like yin and yang that come together and complete each other. Just as two negatives create a positive, our energy comes together and creates a balance. We are two opposites from the same group. The universe is made up of this. We are both humans, but opposite humans, different humans among the same group. And so we are one in the same. There is no reason for a female rulership over a male one and there is no reason for a male rulership over a female one. If we are to ever just get along and find harmony and be good human beings, there is very good reason for a joint leadership, a universal harmony, a world of unity. Humans chase likeness. We love things that are all the same. We love things that are formed with likeness. And so with this human tendency to strive for likeness, we tend to dismiss things that are not like us. This is completely natural. We feel comfort in the things that are more like us. But in dismissing things that are not like us completely, 
as we have reached that point, we have closed off completely almost everything. And we have closed off our nations from each other. We have divided the world and destroyed unity and separated ourselves. So male energy kind of over through female energy. And then females kind of lost their voices and the male energy was powering on with its likeness. A great book into understanding the difference in male and female energy is the book Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, written by John Gray in 1992. Hey, that's the year I was born. So I hope this doesn't upset any of my male viewers, but until six or seven weeks, we were typically sexless. So we were predominantly female. Now, the reason we say this is because females are made up of the X chromosome and males are made up of the Y chromosome. So at the start of creation, until around six or seven weeks, we are ruled by the X chromosome and the Y chromosome is not introduced until then. In our history, being sexless, um, was said to be holy. It was kind of worshipped. Men of holiness would castrate themselves to be sexless. And by this I mean I'm cutting off, you know, yeah. Being castrated goes right back in our historic texts to Sumerian texts and also it has great mention in the Bible. Enochs were very praised, honoured, trusted, they had beautiful voices and if they had surgery before they hit puberty their voices remained very high pitched and grew into a very beautiful turn as they grew but it didn't drop I guess you would say and so as being genderless is something holy and gender is something we became not some birthright then we can assume that no gender is better than the other as other studies have endlessly proven. So what is the current situation for women? We are almost there, but not there just yet. We are almost equal. We are seen as much higher and appreciated a lot more. And men respect women a hell of a lot more but we are definitely far from equal. Men are still favoured in places such as workforces, um, high communities, agriculture and types of benefits from that, um, global resources. Um, men are still favoured quite a lot. 60% of the world's chronically hungry people are women and females. Studies show that if a female does not get her education, her offsprings are more likely to die. 130 girls globally are without education or even having chance of such. This is worst in Africa and Pakistan is quite bad also. There are many cultures where this is a really huge issue. Male education is often seen as something more valuable than a woman's, although this is just totally ridiculous and honestly just barbaric. The women are often cast into the role of the slave of the household who make sure everything is in order in the house with their finances and their personal time. 
women often do this without question although it's not really just our women's duty is it we are supposed to if anything look after each other and unite and have teamwork and cooperation women were wise and often seen as wise women in sumerian texts the serpent came to the woman in the garden of eden and with the apple on the tree of knowledge he gave her the knowledge of a tree to be the first tool used and so eve when she ate the apple of knowledge and gained the knowledge from the serpent she was said to behold the knowledge of the gods and from that every woman passed down from that held this knowledge men often saw this as quite a threat queens of our past often ruled alone and they did not need a male counterpart and women were warriors some seemed to overpower anyone Joan of Arc for instance Noah's wife for those who don't know Joan of Arc Joan was a sweet girl who led the French army to victory in New Orleans Joan was a shield maiden but she didn't fight in the war that she is famous for. In 1429, the greatest war that was called the Hundred Year War um, is what she led the French army to victory in. She was a heroine. She was said to have gotten divine guidance to help them strategize their tactics in the war. And she literally saved the French army now of course as they typically did in this time they deemed her a sorceress and burned her at the stake i am honestly sure that joan would have been looking down at her peers on that stake and just thinking yes i definitely should have let you 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 and you go to the bloody shacks Honestly, how ungrateful can you get? They owed her their lives and in return, they tortured her for her success. That was the end of Joan. And then a very, very long time after, she was then deemed by the Pope, I'm quite sure, that she was a saviour and great and everything. But that's after they'd hated on her for so long and killed her in such a horrific way now as i said joan didn't fight in that war but there was shield raidens in our history and warriors that were incredible such as the amazonian women the viking women i will get to more women also goddesses were seen as very very powerful and much of these goddesses were known to walk among us just as normal humans did. Athena, for example, was a fierce warrior goddess who no one could overpower in her days of glory. Athena was the Greek goddess of war. Much of Europe's women were just as essential in combat as men just as essential in combat as they were at home and men were just as essential at home as they were in combat vice versa in 2017 in chicago new mexico the remains of 14 warrior women were discovered with precious jewels and riches and an elite set of burial chambers they shared the same dna which was only passed from mother to child in the female line matriarchal the past was full of matriarchy and this means female rule the nubians of sudan have a rich history of female rule we also have boudicca 
queen of a British Celtic tribe. Cleopatra, ruler of Egypt, 51 to 30 BC, before Christ. Queen Zenobia of the Palmyrene Empire, the Empire of Syria. She honestly reminds me of Xena, the warrior princess. <laughs> queen Kubaba, the only queen on the Sumerian kings list. Her reign was as long as 100 years, roughly 2500 to 2330 BC. Some records say 2330, meaning 170 years. What? She reigned for as long as 100 years in 2500 BC onwards. And then we have Queen Kuabi, the Queen of Ur. Most of these women, as I mentioned, ruled alone, so without male counterparts. I'm just proving here that women can rule the world just as men can. And then we have the triple goddesses. The triple goddesses are three women who are noted throughout most of our history who stand together and unite a source of knowledge. Some historians refer to the triple goddess as the Irish goddess Brigid. Brigid and her sisters were all called Brigid. They shared the same name and these three sisters were very loved by poets and historians and people of high importance in history and so a lot of historians today believe that the three aspects of the sisters and their characteristic personalities relate to the triple goddesses. Another example of the triple goddesses would be the Morai. The Morai were three ladies who were often called the Fates as well and they were in Greek mythology said to control the lifespan and destiny of every mortal being. And then we have female Ascended Masters. Ascended Masters are beings who had a mortal life, who reached enlightenment and decided to stay with the earth. This could relate to coming back in reincarnation, but generally just means that they are spiritual helpers who stay beyond the veil but interfere with earth beings especially ones who call upon them. A notable female Ascended Master is Lady Nada. Women were always appreciated for their beauty and one of the most beautiful goddesses known in our time was Aphrodite. Aphrodite was said to be the most beautiful woman on earth and had a lot of people who worshipped and praised her. Some people believe that the goddesses were real people and people in our history very much so believed this but nowadays we tend to believe that they were figures of stories and things who we could look at as perfect humans. But like I said back in their day they tended to believe that these were people who lived among them. I believe that we do not really know, but I don't think it's very far-fetched to think that these were real beings, considering our history speaks so fondly of them. So basically, women as a whole used to be a lot more powerful, lost that power and are slowly regaining it. But the more people who realise how powerful they once were and how capable women actually are and that they are equal, so should be treated as such, until this happens, the divide will continue. The more people who realise that we once were extremely powerful and are no less capable and 
until women embrace their goddess energy without feeling bad about it and realize that it's okay to be more than just a housewife the void will continue we will not be appreciated to our fullest as women until we accept who we were and realize that we are just as capable and so to finish this video let me say as women we are divinely feminine and that is a beautiful thing uniting together would be as easy as it was destructed feminine energy is a good thing and is very much essential a woman's body can withstand two souls in the one vessel that's pretty impressive i don't know what other documents really talk about that besides possession and we all know that normally ends badly but a woman's body can hold and then give birth to and then nourish a child let's make it okay again to have female energy whether you are a male or a female young old whatever let's make it so that girls have the same opportunities as boys let's make it so that no females are less worthy than males because they shouldn't be every good cause needs a reason there is no reason in a world of oddity we must appreciate oddness we are one in the same just having a different experience and so don't just be a housewife be more what did you want to be as a child be that don't let anything stop you especially being a female as it is divine thank you for watching